Hello, social distancers. I'm Jeff Marcico from the Kafafian Group, and we're sending out five-minute banking shorts uh, to break up our day of either working from home or dealing with significantly reduced activity uh, at your bank. Might as well talk about a few banking issues. What, do I, what else are we going to do? I got dressed up for you. Uh, not wearing a tie, though. But today, our banking short, I'd like to talk about why this customer and not that customer. And I want to go over three uh, types of customers, the retail uh, customer, the retail small business customer, the commercial customer, and also the wealth customer. So I want to talk about all three, but I want to make sure I keep it within five minutes. So I got my trusty uh, iPhone here and my alarm's going to go off. And I, this is my second take of this video because I went over five minutes. If you knew me, you would know that it's very difficult for me to talk about anything in a five minute period. First, let's talk about the retail customer. Why this customer and not that? We tend to focus on balances when we uh, serve customers and we seek customers. Let's take that $250,000 CD customer right at the FDIC insurance limit. That usually is a very desirable customer because what, we want that, those funds in the bank. But the problem is the CD is one of the lowest spread products that you offer at your bank. Today, the spread, meaning the credit for funds for a market equivalent instrument versus the rate you pay on that CD, the spread's about 50 basis points today, which is at a pretty historic high. Usually it's 10 to 25 basis points uh, in, a, in a highly competitive environment. But at 50 basis points, that $250,000 CD going to generate about $1,250 in annual revenue. And guess what? That CD customer is probably going to shake you down for 10 to 15 basis points more. As you know, they do. They come in, spend some time, tell you the bank across the street is offering 15 basis points more. They're going to try to shake you down for that amount of time. CD customer is typically a very transactional customer. On the other side of the coin is... Jane's Tire and Battery down the street. Jane may only have $50,000 in her operating account, but if you take a look at the spread plus the fees as a percent of that $50,000, currently that's about 2.64%. So Jane's Tire and Battery, even though only one fifth of the balance of that gray haired CD customer is generating more revenue, $1,320 for that $50,000 account, versus $1,250 for that uh, $250,000 account. And what customer is more valuable to the bank? Of course, Jane has a much greater likelihood of having a full relationship with your bank because the operating account generally is an indication of the bank that Jane has a relationship with. Whereas that gray-haired CD customer is not necessarily loyal to your bank, very transactional in nature. So in that case, where does the branch manager spend their time? Where does the business development officer spend their time? I'm not saying don't deal with the gray haired person shaking you down for 10 extra basis points for that quarter of a million dollar CD, but you should be spending your time serving Jane, acquiring and saving Jane. What about the commercial customers? This is always a challenge for banks because banks like to take real estate as collateral. So their favorite loan du jour is the commercial real estate loan. And there's quite a point for that. Commercial real estate loan on average is about a half a million dollars in balances. And the spread on that loan is about 2.6% currently. That generates about $13,000 of revenue per loan. You take the business loan, like the business line of credit, typically not real estate collateralized, right? Generates a much greater spread, 3.22% in today's environment but the average balance of that account is only $200,000, so it's much smaller. So that generates about $6,440 in annual revenue. So it's about half of what a commercial real estate loan. The challenge is, the challenge is one, commercial real estate concentration levels, of course, the regulators don't like to have over three times your capital amount in commercial real estate loans. Secondarily, a commercial real estate loan is generally much more transactional than the, the CNI business loan. In other words, just like Jane's Tire and Battery, that business borrower, that one that has that line of credit with your bank, you are likely their relationship bank. Whereas that commercial real estate bank uh, customer 
typically will farm bids out for two or three different banks to do that commercial real estate loan. It's very transactional. And in fact, if you look at banks that have predominantly commercial real estate loans versus that relationship-based business loans, they sometimes trade at lower trading multiples on the market. So even though that commercial real estate customer uh, generates more revenue, the bank needs to balance that with business customers because a business customer is much more likely to have a relationship with your bank than a commercial real estate customer who is generally transactional. And the last one I want to talk about is the wealth customer. Things are changing significantly. Usually a bank doesn't want somebody in their trust department if they have one until they have a certain level. Oh, there's my timing. But I trudge on a certain level of investable assets, such as a half a million dollars. Problem is with robo advisors today, you know, you could start with 50, uh, 10,000, 15,000, and just add a couple hundred bucks a month. Banks generally are not keen on that type of customer. They'll take their savings account, but from that early savings account until the time that they get $500,000, this person's accumulating wealth. And in this case, I suggest that banks look at the lifetime value of the customer if they're loyal customers to their bank, because they're probably going to be profitable if they just had a savings account and they accumulated 10 grand. That'll probably be a profitable customer to the bank, but then they're going to be looking for more alternatives for that money. And there's that gap or that donut hole that banks tend to not fill very well. Uh, so they have to come up with a solution to get that customer to the investable asset size that makes it feasible for you to deal with them in the trust department. So don't ignore the young saver with little amounts because the lifetime value of that wealth customer could pay off for you in the long run. Balance between commercial real estate and business customers and look for that core operating account customer at the retail and small business level. Have fun today, be productive, we'll get through this together.